computer feature. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Art 116. We're going to get started today um, trying to figure out color and color theory and just looking at some of the basics of the first three or four pages of our chapter seven in our textbook. And so I'm going to do a screen share and get the old color theory thing up and running here. Let me know if you guys can see that online. And if you can't, you might have to um, uh, log in um, later on when I've got the recording up on YouTube. If, um, if uh, Zoom takes up too much bandwidth and things are breaking up or you can't hear me, um, the way to do this is to do it as an online presence probably later on. I mean, um, at YouTube, because YouTube is a much narrower kind of way to do this. So color theory, chapter seven, uh, the pages are approximate because we're using the last three editions of the textbook. So pages, your, your mileage may vary, uh, your pages may vary, but it's chapter seven. And so off we go into this. Um, an introduction to color theory, blah, blah, blah. Um, your authors start off with the very basics that light is the source of color, of all of the color that we can perceive with our eyes. Um, we're going to look at artists' color mixing. And for this class, for the purposes of this class, we're pretty much going to be dealing with the subtractive color process. So we're going to talk about additive and subtractive color. And then we're just going to become artists and work with pigments because it's really easy to do that hands-on in a classroom situation. Um, and there are physical properties of color, which we may or may not get to because it's not all that important. So I'm moving along here. Remember, this is um, recorded and it's going to be on YouTube. So if you guys have questions, you can come back and look at this again if you want to. Um, most of these slides are straight out of the textbook. So this all helps. <clears throat> Let's see, where can I put you guys for this particular slide? I'm going to put you up here. White light is pretty much what we're dealing with when we're dealing with sunlight or something that closely approximates sunlight, like artificial lighting inside of a room or something like that. And so um, artists and um, physicists, uh, you know, going back to, um, uh, well, um, let's see. Um, oh God, it's escaping me now, but it'll come to me. Um, for a long time, I have noticed that when light passes through a prism, a polished glass prism, that the light is refracted or bent. And so bent light um, separates, the bending of the light separates out the different wavelengths of light. And so that we can see them as a spectrum or, you know, as a um, rainbow. And we've noticed this with rainbows forever and then noticed it with um, you know, glass prisms and that kind of thing. So let's look at the uh, slide here and go over this real quick. So we've got white light coming into the prism. It gets bent or refracted as it's moving through the prism because it, the wavelengths of light are slightly different, the energy levels of slightly different, the light gets bent at different amounts. Now, the thing that I've never understood is that I always thought that um, the ultraviolets and the violets were a higher energy of light than the red. So it always um, kind of makes me, it, it feels like it's backwards, that the, that the warm end of the spectrum bends less and that the cool end of the spectrum bends more because I thought that, you know, more energetic things wouldn't bend quite so much. But this is the way that it happens. So we've got violet uh, bending the most, getting separated out at the most. And <clears throat> I need to take a moment here and talk about violet because violet is the name of the, the hue. It's the name of the color. Now you guys have probably seen purple because you know purple has a crayon that we played with a lot when we were kids in, in grade school and stuff like that. But the technical term of that uh, hue or that color is going to be violet. And so, you know, we should have a swear jar in here so that everybody has to put 25 cents every time that we say that it's purple. But, you know, we prefer the term violet, especially in the arts and in design, 
because it's it's way more specific about this particular um, this particular hue. So now I'm trying to get my cursor to go again. So violet, then the idea of blue violet is something in the spectrum. We're not going to really deal with it too much as a hue, um, although it will be on our color wheel. But violet and blue and then green, and then we get into our warm colors of yellow, orange, and red. And so these are kind of how they um, are separated out um, as a spectrum through a prism, which is kind of interesting. Uh, moving right along here, there's the photograph from a photograph of it from our textbook, light moving through a prism and on a black surface so that we can see what the light actually looks like. Um, so here's a slide from an older version of your textbook that talks about additive color, which you guys are going to think is really funny because it has these antique things down here that you've never seen before. Slide projectors, carousel slide projectors from the 1970s and 80s. So anyway, when we've got a red slide in one projector and a green slide in another projector and a blue slide in the third projector, those are the um, those are like the primary colors of the additive process. People who use the additive process are computer people when we're dealing with pixels and light and stuff that's available to us in the computer system. Um, people in theater production who have to put gels over lights to create colored light so that you can manipulate the lighting on a stage for a stage production of either theater or musical production, use the additive process of color. This is the only slide where we're gonna talk about that because everything else this quarter is gonna be subtractive color. But you need to know additive color because it's gonna be on the midterm quiz. So I want you guys to know that there is such a thing as, as additive color that, and that the primary colors of additive color are red, blue, and green light. So um, with my cursor, I'm up here in the green one here and red and blue. And when they overlap, you get the secondary colors of the additive process. And the secondary colors of additive color are yellow, magenta down here, really, really fancy, and cyan. And those colors are also used in the printing industry quite a bit. Um, so it's, it's interesting, the, the inks that you get used in the printing industry are slightly different than what uh, the color system is for artists, which of course is different than the, co than the additive color system. So it, it gets kind of confusing here. But when you put all of these colors of light together and they overlap in the center of this thing, this little bent triangle in the center is white light. So we can add these colors together. And when they all add together, you do get your white light back. Um, that's really cool kind of thing that is so counterintuitive. We're not even used to seeing it that way, but that's how the additive system of light color works. And I'm sorry, but I have to keep moving on. So next page. So we uh, in art and design in a lot of areas of the design, of design use the subtractive color system because we are using dyes and uh, paint pigments and other kinds of things. So we have to ask ourselves, how do we see um, color when we see objects, when we see a leaf on a tree or the tabletop in front of you or something like that? How do we see color reflected from an object? The theory is that a green leaf appears green because the leaf reflects only green light back to the observer's eye and it absorbs all the other colors. And because it does that absorption of all the other colors and does not reflect those back to the eye, that's why we call this the subtractive process. So when we see a, an object in reality that has a certain color, it is reflecting that color back to our eye and subtracting out and not reflecting all the other colors in the spectrum. Again, it's kind of hard to wrap your brain around that, but that's the subtractive color process. And so when we work with pigments, like in paint, um, that's kind of what we're seeing because the paint pigments um, reflect only one color back to our eye and um, 
subtract all the other ones out. So yay, we're doing that. Today in class, I wanted to build a color wheel. And of course, I'd like to do it as difficult as possible. So I want to do it with only the primary colors of the subtractive process. So as we look at how we organize a color wheel, especially in the modern age, um, we want to look at this uh, solid upside right equilateral triangle here, because this has the three um, primary colors in it. So when we're going to organize a color wheel, we always put yellow up at the top. It's just what we do. Um, and red goes over here, and the warm colors are over on the left side of the color wheel. And then blue is over here on the right side of the color wheel with the cool colors and the cool kids. So these, these three colors connected by the solid lines in this uh, triangle are the primary colors. Then we're looking at secondary colors. Secondary colors are made by adding two primary colors together, mixing two primary pigments together. And the secondary colors for the subtractive process are gonna be like orange, violet down here at the bottom and green. And so when you mix yellow and red together, you get orange. And when you mix um, red and blue together, you get violet. And when you mix blue and yellow together, you get green. And a lot of us have experienced that already in our lives. In other art classes, in grade school and high school, you've, you maybe you have run into something like that. We mix colors together and you saw something of this process. Today, we're going to try to do all of that stuff together on one color wheel and try to balance it out. So our primary color triad are yellow, red, and blue. And our secondary color triad is orange and violet and green. Hooray. Okay, that is so much fun. We're going to do it again. So now on this slide, our authors have taken away the primary colors of yellow, red, and blue. And they've taken away the secondary colors of orange, violet, and green. And now we're looking at the intermediate colors, the colors that would come between the primary and secondary colors. And so between, ah, come on, between yellow and red, we're going to have red orange and yellow orange. And so we always name a um, uh, intermediate color um, using the name of the primary color first and then the name of the secondary color second that it's kind of mixed with. So if you're looking at red orange right here, um, it comes between red and orange. Red is the primary, orange is the secondary color. And so the name of this color is red orange because that's how we do stuff, primary first, secondary second, to get the, the name of the intermediate color. And so starting at the top with yellow, we're gonna go to yellow orange, then we're going to come over here to red orange. Then we're going to drop down here to red violet. See how that works. And then skipping over here, we're going to go to blue violet. And up here to blue green, which doesn't really look blue green on the screen. Oh, God, it doesn't look like hardly anything on the screen inside the classroom. And finally, getting up here to yellow green. And those six colors are our six intermediate colors on the color wheel. And I know that you guys are, it's like drinking from the fire hose because it's like, really? He wants us to remember all of that? So when we put it all together, um, we have our primary color triad here, yellow, red, and blue. We have our secondary, primary color, uh, secondary color triad of orange, violet, and where's green? This is green here. Okay, green. And then we've got all of our intermediate colors around them for a total of 12 colors on the color wheel. Um, the last thing that your authors talk about that we're going to get into next week are the tertiary colors. And these are the colors that happen when you mix colors across from each other on the color wheel. So we're, we're gonna ignore that stuff today. We're gonna come back to this slide next week. Um, but 
this is where you start to get into um, when you go to a paint store to try to find paint for your house at you know for your house painting either interior or exterior and you see those those great big huge wall displays that have all of the little paint chips on them and it looks like a huge you know impossible to understand um, you know cacophony of different colors we're going to figure all that stuff out and most of those colors are are tertiary colors and colors that have had a little bit of white or a little bit of black added to them to create um, um, tints and shades of colors. We're gonna to get to all of that next week. So we're not gonna worry about that today. Today, we're gonna to try to build a color wheel just out of the outside strongest colors that we can come up with. We feel that the colors that are on the outside edge of the color wheel are full spectrum intensity colors. They're the, the brightest uh, colors that you can get in nature uh, from pigments or from light. And so that's why they're at the outside extreme edge of the color wheel. They're the best, um, brightest, truest uh, versions of these colors that we can get to. And so those are the ones we're gonna try to mix today. Um, I guess I get to stop the share at this point and ask you guys, do you guys have any questions for me? Those online, you can unmute a mic and fire away if you've got a question. Anybody in the classroom have any questions about this lovely little introduction to color that is already too scary for most of us to deal with? I don't see any hands up. This is good. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, change video and I'm going to go to my overhead bird's eye cam view of my desktop here. And we're going to pin this to the thing. And I'm going to get rid of the participants list so that we can see this all right here in front of me. Oh my God. Okay. So welcome to my little desktop. We're going to talk today about trying to do a color wheel as a project. And so I just you know, went into Microsoft Word and blasted out this little color wheel using the shapes and line drawing uh, stuff in Microsoft Word. It's not that hard. So I've got a circle drawn and I've got it segmented into 12 pieces of a pie for the 12 colors. And this is just a little decoration in the middle. Don't worry about this stuff here. All we're worried about is this outside ring of colors here. And once again, we've got all the colors names on here. So yellow, yellow, orange, orange, red, orange, red, and red, violet, violet, blue, violet, and blue, and then blue, green, green, and yellow, green. 12 freaking colors. For those of you who are watching at home and don't have uh, a color wheel and don't think you can print this out, and for, for what it's worth, I've also printed it out on a piece of cardstock. So this is a little bit heavier than just computer paper. It's more durable. It's not going to pucker up when I paint a liquid on here, and then the liquid is going to get it wet, and it'll expand, and then it'll dry, and it'll contract, and do all kinds of funny things as a piece of paper. So for those of you at home, you could try this little trick if possible. You know, we do have the idea of our watercolor or our Bristol board kinds of uh, gummed uh, paper that we're supposed to use for this class to do our projects on. So a person could take a sheet of Bristol board um, or watercolor paper out of the pad and improvise a quick color wheel. So you could take this thing here and you could find some kind of a round, um, you know, sour cream lid container, something like that that'll fit on here. And look at this, we're just getting all creative all of a sudden, this is kind of scary. And draw a circle, you know, tracing that around here. And we could, Let's see, how are we gonna do this? I did that kind of like that. So I have to sort of, and you might wanna do this in pencil and not in pen because I'm about to do something that's like, how, how are you possibly gonna do that, James? I'm gonna try to bisect this thing um, 12 times. 
And so that's going to be kind of weird. There's two. Yeah, and this is already getting weird. And so we're going to try to do this. Uh-huh, something like that. One and two. Wish me luck, everybody. Hanging on here. There's four. All I got to do is get... I don't think I'm going to get them all on here. When I'm doing it on a computer, it's just a little bit easier. So there's one and there's one, but this would be a way of being able to improvise and get 12 pieces of the pie. You can practice this um, on Friday night pizza night if you wanna go ahead and uh, make a pizza and try to cut it into 12 equal pieces. I think I've got 12 here. They're not exactly equal. Somebody's gonna get more pizza than others. But anyway, this is a way to, improvise a color wheel template for you guys to work with. Um, otherwise, this is the template that we've got to work with. So um, for colors, some of you have asked me what kind of colors to buy at the store and stuff. This is the kind of colors that I'm getting for our classroom. So I'm getting large scale bottles for the classroom that we can all use together in here. For today's project, I only want you to squeeze out a teaspoon of color. That's all I want you to do. For those of you who are playing our game at home, at Walmart, we've got uh, these two ounce bottles of uh, color that are available in the arts and crafts area of Bymart. I'm sorry, Walmart. And so these are, you know, this is a possible thing that you can use for colors because um, they're relatively cheap. They're like 97 cents for this bottle. And that's the kind of thing that you can use at home. So that, that's what's possible. Um, I've also got these, you know, lids left over from uh, stuff that's around the kitchen. And I find that these make a really wonderful palette for being able to mix paints on because we can mix our paint on here and then we can wash it off in the sink when we're done and everything's wonderful. Um, and then as far as the paint brushes go, Again, going to Walmart because these are relatively cheap. Um, for five bucks, you can find either the round paint brushes that are round and pointed. They have a round metal ferrule that makes for a round paint brush. And these are all kind of a medium sized paint brush. Some are a little on the little side, but most of them are a size that really works good. So you can get five of these and two or three of you guys can buy one package of these on the buddy plan and everybody gets a paintbrush and that's wonderful. Um, these are the flat kind of paintbrush. So this has more of a flattened uh, metal ferrule and then we have a chisel shaped brush that is flat and shaped like a chisel. And these work pretty good too. So both of these packs of brushes were like, you know, $4.97 because that's how they price stuff at Walmart. And either one of these would be just fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up. Oh my God, I should have opened it up in ahead of time because I can't get in here. Oh, you guys, this is terrible. Okay, I have broken in to the paintbrush thing and I'm just gonna select one of these paintbrushes and make it happen. This paintbrush is, is made for acrylic paint it has um, actually, I think, ac uh, acrylic bristles in it that are just a little bit stiffer than something you'd use for watercolor paint. So this is a stiffer paintbrush that can push around the heavier bodied acrylic paint than watercolor is a really light bodied acrylic paint. So when we go to um, get our paint going here, we're just going to want to bust into the paint and get rid of last year's uh, crumbly stuff. And I only want you guys to put like just a little bit of paint on the, you know, half a teaspoon is about what this is. It's about the size of the tip of my finger, half a teaspoon of paint and get the crumblies going. I'm even gonna organize my palette similar to the color wheel. So I've got yellow here, I've got red over here. If I was gonna start with blue, I'd get it over here. Acrylic paint dries out really fast. So I kind of just wanna work between red and yellow right now. And I'm gonna do like these um, five 
parts of the of the color wheel right now. So that'll be great. So I've got my color wheel, I got my paints. Let's start mixing paint. We're just gonna kind of, oh, one more thing I didn't tell you about. I have a container full of water. Again, um, used uh, recycled uh, plastic container full of water so that I can rinse out my paint brushes. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of color over here and that's yellow. And we're gonna have to use equivalent amounts of paint for this project. So from the edge of the red, not from the middle, don't take your half out of the middle, take it from the edge of the red. We're gonna scoop out a little bit of red. We're gonna mix red and yellow together to see if we can make orange. And of course, we're not gonna get there because the red overpowers the, um, the yellow. And so I've got something that's a lot more like a red, a, a, um, a red orange, um, which might be just fine. Hey, we could do that. I'm gonna put this in red orange just because I'm right here and it's right there and it's ready to go. It's a little bit more orange than red as it's appearing on the paper, which is just fine. But this is one way that I can clean it off of my paintbrush is by using it. So I might as well use it and then I can fix it later. If, if this becomes too orange for my taste, I can come back and make it redder so that I, I really wanna get nice incremental color changes happening on here. So I'm gonna just clean my brush really quick. I should, I should have done this the other way. When I had yellow on my brush, I just should have put yellow into the yellow spot and I just should have put red into the red spot so that it's not funny. Also off camera, I happen to have a whole bunch of paper towels handy. So you can pull the pigment out of your paintbrush and by rinsing it out in water and pulling the pigment out in a paper towel, you're good to go. So I'm going to do what I was supposed to do at the beginning and take the yellow and put it into the yellow spot. And then I'm going to come and take the red and put it into the red spot so that I can just get established. You get these for free. You get these three colors for free. Red, blue, and yellow are pre-mixed for you. They're primary colors. You cannot mix red, blue, or yellow from any other colors. You have to have those as primary um, pigments. So I get something like that. And I'm gonna rinse it out off camera, rinsing out my brush, and then pulling the pigment out and we want to change water as often as we can so that we're getting all of the pigment out of the bristles of the brush so that you get as clean a brush as possible. You might still be able to see just a tiny little bit of yellow pigment in there. That will foul up things. You really have to try to get the, all the pigment washed out of the brush as much as you can so that you don't have any pigment in there because it will contaminate, and we don't want things contaminating your paint stuff. Um, let's put on some red. So we're just gonna play with the red. And some of these colors are not completely opaque colors. Sometimes the color is a little bit weak and you can see the paper kind of shining through. So we might have to put two coats on just to make sure that we get a really, really red thing going on there. Now we can go back to the secondary and intermediate colors here. So um, for the orange, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, I'm gonna wash out my brush one more time so that I don't have a, pre, a whole bunch of, <clears throat> of red paint in there because I've got to pull some more of this yellow and mix it into my red orange puddle to try to make an orange. Now orange is supposed to be halfway between yellow and red. And so we're trying to find something uh, that's halfway between yellow and red. And that's really hard to do. We're also gonna lose just a little bit of intensity. We're not gonna get full spectrum intensity on orange because we're mixing it with student grade colors here that don't have the, you know, the perfect kind of color that really mix well and are perfect. So there's an orange. Okay, 
So now we're going to pull a whole bunch more yellow and just mix it into one little corner of this orange puddle right here to try to get a yellow orange going. And so we just keep pulling and pulling and pulling more color into here to try to get a yellow orange. Put it up here and see what it looks like. This is, I know that for you guys, this looks like it's super, super easy, but this is the hard part trying to get incremental color changes to happen when you step off of yellow to get a yellow orange because it's really easy to get this to be too dark and too orange. And so we're really gonna try to get, you know, yellow and then incremental color changes after that, yellow, orange, orange, red, orange, and red so that they look nice and incremental. Otherwise, everything looks orange over on this side and then you have a great big jump from yellow orange to yellow and that's not what we want i would like you guys experimenting with this enough so that you're really you're you're comfortable with the idea that um you know you might have to come in here and just mop in just a little bit more yellow to get this yellow orange to be yellow enough so that you've got good incremental color change from yellow to yellow orange and then into orange and that's why you know i didn't know whether my red orange was going to be red enough or whether it was going to be too orange but this now looks pretty good as i go around the color wheel i'm feeling like i'm getting really nice incremental color changes when i go from color to color so that was just using two primary colors of yellow and red to get this third of the color wheel done we might want to go uh, the other way now, stepping off of yellow, you might want to now put some blue on here and then color in the blue and then mix yellow and blue together to get green. And then once you've got a green puddle going, then you can put a little bit more blue in it to get a blue green and you can put a whole lot more yellow in the other end of the puddle to get a yellow green so that you've got incremental color changes from yellow to blue. And again, it's really easy to get the yellow green to be too green. And so it's a big jump then. It's a big, huge step to go from here to here on most student um, things. So keep working it. And if you have to keep putting yellow on top of the green just to get it more and more and more yellow green, then do it. Because ultimately I'm gonna wanna see incremental color changes as we go around the color wheel. All right, so that's the demo for today. We're going to do this in the classroom. And those of you who are at home, um, I'm sorry <laughs> that you're not here. I've, I've bought paint, I've got uh, brushes here, and so and I've got the, the template so that we're going to do this in, in class together. At home, you're going to have to improvise this a little bit or wait until you can get here on Monday to get this going. I'm going to look around now and see if there's anybody who has a question for me and uh, questions or comments about this. I'm gonna go back to my little happy face on here. The questions in the classroom or from my online participants on how this is going today? Nobody in the classroom has any hands up or stuff like that. They, they're jonesing to get onto this painting thing. They wanna get out the paints and get going so that we can have some fun. So. Um, I want to ask everybody to make sure that you clean up after yourselves when you're done. This, we go from a presentation hour into a lab hour generally. And so you're supposed to be here almost until 11 o'clock in the morning. So hopefully you can hang around for another, you know, half hour or 40 minutes or something to work on a color wheel and try to get much or most of this done today. Otherwise, we'll pick it up again on Monday and try to finish it up so that we can talk color wheels once you've got something established. I'm going to say goodbye for now to the online folks, and you guys can pick us up on YouTube later on if you want to. Um, anything else for the good of the order? Christina, do you have a question or a comment for me? I was just going to say thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, I'm going to hit the end button, so we'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot.